Hi, I'm Tom Stesco. I'm a field application engineer at TensTorrent, focusing on machine learning software. So today we're going to be looking at a couple different ways you can run large language models. And we'll start here at the TT Metal repository. So this is assuming you've already got the TensorFlow hardware set up. There's a really good guide here on the docs website for getting started. So I point you to that if you're just unboxing and getting started with um, setting up the firmware, setting up the drivers. This is going to assume that you're already past that. So we're going to be running with uh, TT Loudbox today. And this is kind of a schematic of the inside of the TT Loudbox with four and 300 cards. So you can see the QSF PD, the Ethernet cables, as well as the warp connectors on the side. So it's four N300 cards all interconnected together for a total of eight wormhole chips. Here's kind of a snapshot of what it looks like outside the box. But this tutorial will also work for N150 or N300, as well as Galaxy. So all wormhole products, we're going to be looking at how you can run large language models. And starting here in TT Metal, you're going to see all of the large language model implementations that are available today. So they're listed nicely in this table. So you get a model name, the batch size, which is the number of concurrent users that the model implementation can handle and decode at once. You're also going to see the minimum hardware required. So for example, QuietBox will also be the same as Loudbox here. They're the same number of devices, the same hardware. It's just a, a system level difference in terms of the QuietBox being liquid cool and the Loudbox being air cooled. We also see that because this is a minimum hardware requirement, models that say listed here as N300 or N150, it will also run on larger devices. So for example, Llama 3.211 B Vision will also run on the loud box or quiet box, but you need at least an N300 in order to run it. Here is the time to first token, which is the uh, latency required to pre-fill the input sequence length. And this is with a standard input sequence length of 128 tokens for all of these metrics. And then the user level throughput, which is multiplied by the number of users in a given batch to give you the total throughput, which is the decode rate. And this is the number of tokens actually generated per second. Next, you'll see that there's a TT metal commit that's pinned and this is the most recent release candidate where we tested that this model worked uh, from the, the TT Metal CI. Then we have a corresponding VLM commit that will be available for all models that have a VLM integration on all two, but we're adding more and more every few weeks. So the first way you can run one of these models is directly by looking at the, the source code here. You're going to see some documentation on how to run this model. Most of the, the models today we have in the TT Transformers module, which allows us to share optimizations across different operators and low-level kernels that are used by all the different models, so they're seamlessly able to uh, share in the improvements, as well as have a common interface, which has been very, very useful for integrating. So if you're going to use a implementation from this or a different uh, model demo implementation, so you can see that these are all at the models top level directory, um, then in TT transformers or in demos, all of, all of the different model implementations. You're also going to need to first build TT Metal from source. So the instructions for that are in this installing document here. I'm not going to go through this here, but I'll just note that um, 
This is corresponding as well with the setup guide. So please go through that document if you want to build from source. If you're more interested in just getting a uh, pre-built Docker image or a BLM inference server up and running, that's going to be the, the next two ways that you can get this to work. So let's start with the, the VLM path. This is our, our fork of VLM. So you can see here on the dev branch, the most recent work that our engineer, engineering team has put together on integrating with VLM. And then we have the documentation for setting this up and running it in this individual directory, td underscore metal. So there's a, there's a setup script as well as uh, some instructions to pip install VLM. And this will allow you to, to run VLM. There's a couple demo scripts that I'll, I'll point to. Actually, I think there's now a, a tech report. So I'll just mention this briefly as a breadcrumb. There's, there's a lot of really great documentation in the top level TT Metal directory in the tech reports. A lot of engineers have spent time putting together really good, solid technical documentation on uh, particular items of intrigue. Here we can see for LLMs, there's a really great document on how we implemented models, but here for the VLM integration. And the goal is to, to upstream this into the main TT Metal repository, but there's, there's obviously a lot of work that goes into that. So here uh, is some documentation for actually testing the models. Uh, you can run some offline inference or you can run the server. There's a, a server example. So running the examples, server underscore example underscore tt dot pi in our fork of VLM. And then the final path is what I'll mention for building a pre-built Docker image or using a pre-built Docker image uh, with some additional automation. So that's what we have in the TT inference server. So there's similar to TT Metal, a table that has all of the individual models and then corresponding commits that we've tested in pre-built Docker images. So there's a corresponding Docker image and a status related to if we have run evaluations and performance benchmarking for this model to confirm that it is indeed uh, a equivalent implementation to something that you can run on CPU or GPU, TPU or other devices. So for example, looking at a small model like Llama 3.21b, we can run that directly from the, the hugging face weights. So we can download that with a, a setup script. And this model will run with N150 or higher hardware. So we have the corresponding TT Metal commit, VLM commit, and then we can run with this Docker image. Okay, so let's, let's look at it how we can do that. So there's some setup documentation and I'll just, just go to, there's a run script that handles some of the forward and backward compatibility with different versions of TT Metal for different models. So this ultimately templates out a command to run the VLM server as well as set some different environment variables. And let's look at some of the evaluations that we would run to confirm that the model is indeed correct. So we're using the LM evaluation harness uh, and different versions of it, in particular to reproduce the instructions that Meta provides. So here in the, the Llama cookbook repo, they have some LM evaluation harness reproduction instructions, and in particular for the, the evals and specific data sets that they've used to publish their 
uh, their scores for different evaluation tasks. And I know that sometimes it's uh, either benchmark or eval are interchanged. Here we want to use a uh, nomenclature of evals for accuracy and performance benchmarking. I'm switching here to VS Code, and this is on the TT Loudbox server. I'm in the TT Inference Server repository, and just looking at the docs, workflows, user guide. So this has some documentation on how to use this run.py command line interface, which allows running for different workflows. And we're gonna start just by running the server. So that's one of the workflow types is you can start the inference server. And then this is gonna use the Docker server and the images that are pre-configured for the model. So here's the command that I need to run it. So I'm also going to run the dev mode. So I use the dev containers. And this is just going to template a command to docker run. And it'll give you the container ID of the container that's running the VLM inference server. So I can already check if that's up. And I can see it right here. You can also look at the, the logs using Docker logs from that container. So the model is just being brought up here on the device, starting to run. I can also see the logs in the workflow logs Docker server, and that's gonna be a timestamp log for the specific model and device type. So that's gonna be what we just saw from Docker logs, very, very similar output. Okay, so we can see here that the, the server is started on localhost 8000. So that container is still up and it will remain up until I bring it down or the server crashes. So we can send requests to it anyways, but I'll run one of the, the workflows that sends requests, either the benchmarks or the evals. So we can run the, the benchmarks workflow and this is going to start sending requests to that VLM server. So first it's setting up the virtual environment to run the VLM online serving benchmark script. And then it's gonna run initial, initial prompts of a specific input sequence length to capture uh, so-called traces or really just compile the, the binaries that are gonna run on the 10.6 cores for the specific input types. So this is done at runtime and this script allows us to pre-compile all of those so we don't have them in our benchmarks. Okay, so this will take a minute and then we'll, we'll come back when all of these traces are captured. Okay, so we can see the requests now being handled by the server, as well as the, uh, the compiling finishing for the pre-fill and decode. Okay, now that the trace capture is finished, we can see the benchmarking runs start. So this is going to be for a specific input output sequence length, and then it'll generate the command line output going to show the, the performance here, for example, with uh, eight, eight prompts, each of uh, <clears throat> 128 tokens of input, 128 tokens of output. So we're going to, it'll iterate through all the different combinations, but I'll, I'll stop it here and then I'll show you how to take down the server. So that server is still running uh, and I can just take it down with docker stop. And we'll be able to see here in the, the docker logs as well, the server come down and that's, that's how we know that everything is shut down correctly.
if for whatever reason it doesn't shut down correctly, you'll be able to use the TTSMI reset function to bring the, the cards back into a good state if they, uh, for whatever reason, have issues. Okay, and that's all. Thanks, thanks for paying attention, and I hope you found this helpful.